doing some crop scouting on the motorcycle between the rows of beans. That's what that July rain does right there. That looks nice. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Well, good morning everybody. It is a Saturday morning and we've got a beautiful Kansas day today. Blue skies, sun is shining, and we're pumping water. So our corn is uh, definitely our, our best looking crop right now, uh, just cause it got all that, that rain in early June. And uh, it's also, you know, being irrigated. And so a lot of potential for this corn. Uh, we've been working with irrigation the last, definitely the last couple weeks. So uh, basically checking the pivot to make sure it's running, checking the river screen to make sure it's running, uh, which I'll show you guys here in a little bit. As you guys probably noticed, the in gun on that pivot is plugged. And so I'm trying to, I was trying to catch the pivot when it was on the edge of the field here, which it's probably still an hour away. And we're gonna try to stop it and get that in gun going again. Uh, the in gun can, can plug with stuff in the water or sometimes it just, it just plugs. Um, but you basically just clean it out and get it going again. I'm just loving the sky this morning. This, this sky and the, the corn, very American right there. All right, we'll check the, uh, check out the river screen and the pump. So this is our landing down to the river. This is the pump, the river screen's in the water and obviously the water is pumped up into this pipe and then it goes underground out to the pivot. Well, the pump and the river screen seem to be working good. I've got uh, some parts in the back of my truck here. Uh, we got to work on our other irrigation pivot. We got an underground line that needs repaired. So I'm heading out to the farm to help with that, but. So every year we get asked questions about that irrigation system of how we're allowed to pump out of the river and um, you know what do the water rights look like and, and why don't we irrigate more and uh, so I was actually um, this this Smoky Hill River um, that we're pumping out of it um, it, it has a reservoir Canopolis uh, Dam and Reservoir um, which is you know about 30 miles upstream as the crow flies uh, that that controls the flow of the river and that captures flood water uh, when it floods. So when we got that 12 inches of rain in early June, um, the, the reservoir upstream collected most of that and the, then the river doesn't flood very much. And this Smoky Hill River used to flood like crazy, uh, especially, you know, over 100 years ago. It would cover this whole valley in water. And now that doesn't happen anymore, thankfully, thanks to that reservoir. So it's a two for one. It prevents extreme flooding and it also um, provides irrigation water for farmers along the river. So the rights, the water rights to pump out of that river um, go way back. Um, I don't think you can you can get any more rights. It's only the rights that are there. Uh, and so when we picked up this piece of uh, land here, um, it came with water rights to pump water. So um, like I said, you can't really get more. It's just what's what's already in, in existence. And so we use those water rights to pump out of the river that that river water um, that, that goes on to our crops. And it's it's a good deal for everybody. Here is that same river. You can see the level of the river is pretty high. And that is because um, the reservoir releases quite a bit of water at a time during irrigation season to make sure the farmers have enough uh, water to pump out of. And so um, 
thankfully there's plenty of water this year because of, of all that rain. So this here is a, a line that goes out to that pivot on the hill and it comes from the cattle lagoon that we pump out of over there. And we had a break in the line, so we just gotta do a little repair here. Mmm, strawberries, huh? <laughs> yeah. Is it the doggy? Is that Kobe? Oh boy. Alright, here's the stage that the corn is in right now. I'm gonna count these rows. Um, kind of get a take your rows times your stand count and give an estimated yield. But uh, we're a long ways from finishing. That two inch rain sure helped. Here they come. Heavy bred mamas. Plus that early born calf. Bobbing its head around there. Paddocks. They got plenty of grass at the moment at both of the fall cow pastures. It's growing faster than they're eating it right now, which is a good thing to have. It means I can have a little bit more going into the winter if I need to stockpile anything. Months long now. You playing with the kitty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alright, I just came out of the sale. I bought uh, 14. This is just kind of the, the cow sale. Most of the stuff I bought was right off the cow. On Thursday, there's a big uh, feeder cattle sale. So we're gonna sell, I think, 60 steers uh, at that one. And I'll try to pick up some more calves as well. So lots of stock trailers here today, not many pots. I think there was only one pot over there that was unhooked, so. And they're gonna head out here. figure out how to get out. So you saw what the corn looks like. Here's an update on the Milo. This is full season Milo planted, I don't know, probably three weeks ago. Looking really nice. And this, and Milo is pretty drought tolerant. So I mean, even if this doesn't get rain for a couple weeks should still be okay. We're mainly worried about our soybeans uh, with the with the upcoming forecast. Hello, so I've been caught up on spraying for like maybe a week, but now we have kind of a next round to do. It's not near as busy as we were there uh, just after wheat harvest. I try to spray when when the, the weather's still cool and we have some humidity. Um, we're, so we're spraying the uh, double crop beans and some beans after chopped triticale, which I guess is kind of a double crop as well. So anyways, as soon as I got done with um, spraying uh, burning down wheat stubble, I rinsed the tank really well, triple rinsed it. And um, now I, I might even run one more um, rinse through here and then uh, go spray these endless beans and um, we'll see how it goes. All right, my first load is out. I'm waiting on my uh, water truck. Should be coming down that road up there. Hurry up, Kendall. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm gonna check these be beans across the road. Uh, 
See how they're doing, see how those weeds died. They are filling in the gaps. When you drill beans, they uh, look all spaced out walking through them, but across the field, you get a canopy faster, and that's why we do it. We graze this field with cows on the milo stalks over the winter, but they really, like where they were on versus where they weren't, you can't tell a whole lot of difference, so. Because I think the leaves blow off anyways, so you either have the cows eat them or they blow off <laughs> into a tree row somewhere. There he is, see that truck moving? He's coming! You can kind of see quite a ways in all directions up on this spot. I drive down this dirt road, get her filled up. Fill her up. All right. You can tell it's Nathan because it says his name on his shirt. Thanks, Hitch Ken. <laughs> Got it done. It's like a NASCAR pit stop. All right. It goes pretty fast with a little help to open jugs and stuff. Oh yeah, I'm an excellent helper. We had it. We had everything in by the time the water got full. So. So now I just take this back to the yard. Yeah. All right. I got Target other stuff wind. to do. Nathan calls me, tells me you need to stop everything you're doing. You need to hurry, get here in ten minutes. And I still have to wait on it. He thinks the spraying is like the most important thing on the farm or something. More important than me moving tin head and fencing yeah. and dad mowing. Yada yada. Park it somewhere I can get to it because I still got a little one more. Okay, so. okay. I just like sprayed right next to this guy. He was still laying down. He finally stood up as the boom went four feet from his face. Usually they run off before then. There was one that ran off that direction. That was crazy. I was hoping he wouldn't run into me or try to jump over the boom or something. Double crop soybeans is where we first used shock uh, last year and uh, it seemed to work pretty good with the enlist system. But we had we had nice clean beans uh, in the fall so uh, we used it some more with burn downs this year and we're using it again here um, with the enlist. Greg's helping me this time got this nice meadow to fill on because we've paid it off. I'm gonna have Greg spray the last load and um, get something else done I guess. So I'm gonna take the tinder back to the farm. We're just like a mile away but and uh, see what else I can check off the to-do list. All right, so I'm not sure how much Nathan has filmed of spraying today, but we are uh, posting the double crop beans here, and uh, you can see kind of the stripes of where we planted. This is that field where we all harvested and planted together on the last day of harvest. We got a few weeds out here, but uh, overall pretty good stand. There's our capstan ag. Uh, nozzle control system going to work and our Topcon GPS and monitor auto steer gonna get the weeds killed and, and uh, hope it rains but if even if it doesn't rain we'll have some water to put on this field here's hoping that those weeds right there die so I'm not sure uh, what all has been in this vlog I know Nathan and Kendall maybe filmed a few things and I filmed some things but uh, we haven't uh, been super busy this week kind of it's kind of post wheat harvest double cropping um, doing odds and ends um, our crops still look pretty good um, here's here, here's a, a field of our beans uh, this this is thanks to that uh, 12 inches of rain at the beginning of June and then we had that two and a half inches here a couple weeks ago but the uh, forecast for the next 14 days is um, 12 out of 14 days over 100 degrees. I think Wednesday it's supposed to be 
um, 106, or maybe Tuesday, it's supposed to be 106 degrees, uh, and no chance of rain in the 14-day forecast. The two days that aren't over 100, I think, are like 97 and 98. Uh, hot wind, it could get ugly over the next two weeks. Uh, we need you guys to pray for rain for us. Mainly worried about the soybeans. Um, Milo usually is pretty drought tolerant. It should make it. But we have a lot of acres of soybeans this year and um, it could get ugly over the next two weeks. We need rain and uh, thankfully we did get those rains earlier uh, in the last, last month or so. Um, that's really what's saving us right now. There are people in western Kansas whose crops are just just straight up dying um, or even already dead. Um, the potential's gone. With the high prices and uh, with all the work we put in this spring, as you saw us, we really hope that our crops do not die. That would not be not be good. But in, in Kansas, that is a reality you deal with every year. Your crops could always die because of lack of rainfall. So. Um, you know, we'll be okay if it happens. We just don't want it to happen. Um, thankfully, we do have we do have crop insurance um, if there is a crop failure. Uh, but you would much rather have a good crop. You, you make more money on a on a crop than you do on crop insurance. Crop insurance is just kind of a you know a blanket to soften your your hard fall. So pray for rain, and and uh, we'll keep you posted in the next couple of videos as how it's going. But it's going to be really hot. Um, we're probably not going to work too much in the afternoon unless it's in an air-conditioned cab. Um, we'll probably be working in the mornings and the evenings and then taking the afternoons off, spending time with family. Anyway, it's, it's been good to have you guys along for another video. Please remember to click subscribe if you haven't already and leave us a comment where you're watching from or what you thought of the video. And uh, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you watching and, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website, www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.